And welcome back. On behalf of the Grochet crowd and Good Knit Kisses, I'm Kristen with Good Knit Kisses and I'm bringing to you a gift idea or for your own home. We are going to make little ornament balls. Uh, you could also make them as decorative balls, just change out the yarn. Uh, today what I'm using is two and a half inch um, balls, styrofoam balls, and you can use a solid one or you can hollow one out. The solid is just to build a base for yourself. And you'll also need some felt to cover them up in a contrasting color, uh, whatever color you'd like. Uh, you also can get um, a couple of jingle bells. And what I've done uh, is I've taken a, and um, just taken my scissors. These are a little blunt. You could use kid scissors or some other kind of thing like a, a crochet hook. And I've just gone in here, not, not stabbed it through all the way, but then kind of hollowed out uh, the styrofoam. And I'm just gonna stick these two little jingle balls in here so when it goes on, uh, it's sort of a muffled jingle. It's not too loud, not too annoying, but um, it'd be nice on a tree or you can hang these on a door. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna take our um, little Nifty Knitter Bloom Loom or any 12, uh, 12 peg large gauge loom. You can also take a small gauge loom that has 24 pegs on it and skip every other one if you wanted to. Uh, I just find this one a little bit easier to do. And uh, we're gonna do a reverse drawstring cast on and um, or a modified drawstring cast on. Uh, today I'm using Red Heart Boutique Changes and um, you can really use anything. This one's got um, several different yarns inside of it. And I'm just gonna take it from the outside today. And uh, we're gonna start with a slip knot. And I'm actually gonna do something a little different. We're gonna put this slip knot uh, for in the inside here and put it on our anchor peg. Tighten that up. Let's just let the tail go through. And if this is our number one peg, we're actually gonna go to our last peg and go around like this. And um, then we're gonna skip every other one. So we've got these two in front and then we're gonna skip and go all the way around. This is a modified drawstring cast on. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're gonna go around again, and we're gonna uh, skip, skip this one here and let it be on top, and then as soon as we come to our number one peg, we're gonna grab our hook and knit over. And th this will be skipped because it wasn't, there wasn't anything on it. And we're gonna knit these over wherever they're laying on the bottom. And this just casts it on. Okay, just a couple more here. Okay, and now we can go uh, take these two over one here. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and go around and make our first stitch. And I'm gonna do a figure eight cast on. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do a figure eight stitch. So we have got our working strand coming from this last peg here. So I'm gonna skip the number one, wrap the number two, go back to the back of number one, wrap it. So we've got a little eight stitch on here. And then we're gonna knit these off, one and two. Now we're still we're behind the number one peg. We're gonna go skip this next one, wrap one, come back to the skipped one and wrap it. So every peg is gonna get wrapped twice in the figure eight stitch. You do sequences of two. So skip one, wrap, wrap the skip, knit over. Okay, we're gonna keep going around the loom like this. And make sure every time if you're if you're new to using this, to kind of pull back, see what peg it's coming from, and go around here. There's there's a temptation to skip too far, and then it really messes up the design if you skip too far over. So just kind of get used to feeling where that is. Make sure you're not skipping one. Um, 
not, make sure you're not skipping an extra one. Oh, I dropped my stitch. Let's pick that up. And we're just gonna continue this figure eight stitch. And I want you to knit about 10 rows of this. So when you come back to the first peg, uh, get a little piece of paper and make a tally mark that you've done one row. And um, pause your video and come back. So again, here's just a double show you the figure eight stitch. Go from the working strand, skip one, wrap one, go back to the skipped uh, go back to the skipped one and wrap it. So you've got to figure eight and then knit both of these over. Okay? So that's the last one there. Actually, that's not the last one here. Uh, technically, this ends on the second to last peg. So uh, when you end, you're going to say, say I'm coming to the end of my 10th row. I'm still going to skip one, wrap this, wrap this, and then knit over. And now my working strand is coming from the last peg and then that would be the end of row one. So go ahead and do nine more rows the same way. Go ahead and make a little tally mark sheet that you're, uh, you're following along the right amount. And I'll meet you back in a minute. Actually, you're only gonna need eight rows. You might need as much as 10, but eight is all you need. Okay, I've done eight rows. You can see how the color change has taken effect. Um, you'll see a lot more color change in a larger project. Um, this one, it just, it doesn't change as much, but when you make a bunch of these, they will all look uniquely different. So we are done with uh, making these right here, the figure eight stitch. Uh, what we're gonna do is a uh, just a simple drawstring cast off. Go ahead and wrap once around the loom, cut it, and then we're going to um, pull these purlwise through. Just pull them all the way straight through. Uh, instead of threading your tapestry needle, it's just much easier to do this. And you can you can pull them off uh, once you've done them. If you're not sure which ones, um, you know what order you did them, you can go ahead and as you as you um, thread it through, go ahead and pull it off the peg. And if you're noticing that I have these um, colors on the bottom of my pegs, like what is this that she has going on? These pegs come out really easily and I don't really wanna glue them down because there are certain things, like if you wanna make a, a flower or something, sometimes it's easier when you're done with that to take the pegs off. And so what I've done is I've got a couple of cotton strands in the bottom that I just stuffed in there and then put my pegs on and then cut them short. So they, they hold, uh, they hold the pegs in here without them being a permanent uh, fix so that I can always fix them again. And if you wanted to, you could alternate. You can use those as stitch markers and alternate pearls or something like that to indicate that for you. Okay, I'm coming on my last loop here. Go ahead and take it and pull it through. And now we can take this off of the loom. And so we've got this uh, bottom drawstring area here and we can go ahead and cinch that on through and um, we're gonna pull it through and uh, go ahead and tie this area off and especially because this sort of tape side doesn't hide a uh, strand as easy uh, I want to go ahead and finish it off as much as I can so I'm gonna take it and turn it inside out and find this extra piece here this extra strand I can, I can find it here <laughs> It's kind of hard to see. If you can't, just pull it like this and then you'll be able to get it through to the back. Okay, now that I've got it through to the back, uh, we're gonna get another, um, we're gonna get another loop. And you know what? I'm gonna get this closer to the middle here. See, this is why it's good not to tie an immediate knot. What I'm trying to do is find the center uh, because this is going to be apparent where it came through. So I'm going to try and get this as close to center as I can. So I'm going to pull apart something that's as close as I can. 
and get it to my finger. Okay, so now I've got that. I'm not sure if you're catching what I'm doing, but basically I'm just trying to get this strand to the middle of where that drawstring was. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm gonna grab one of these loops next to the middle, make another loop, and then don't pull it all the way through. And then I'm trying to um, make a knot here. So I'm gonna pull that through and go ahead and get it as close there as you can and as tight as you can. And so now this is, um, this is now knotted together and I can go ahead and, um, you know, make another knot if I want, just to make sure that it's like nice and, and uh, it's not going anywhere. And you can go ahead and cut that strand. Once it's double knotted, I don't think you really need to keep that extra piece. Okay, and this is gonna be on the inside. So now what we wanna do before we close off this other end, uh, well, right now you've got a bell. I mean, if you wanted to do something that was a, um, if you wanted to use felting yarn uh, and then felt this up, you could make a little bell and you could do this with another larger one. So this is kind of fun, but uh, that wasn't the intent today, but I just thought I'd point that out. That's kind of cool. Uh, so what I've got here is I've got a ball and then I've got a piece of felt. And you see me unwrap it because I wanted to show you how it kind of fits together. So you can take a square and then when you pull it up, make sure it kind of comes almost all the way. Um, you could get it to come all the way. And then what I did is I, um, when I pulled one side up, I started cutting all the corners in. So you could sort of cut them as you go and sort of wrap it around. So I put jingle bells in this one. I'm gonna make the jingle bells come down to the bottom here and that way they don't come out. And I'm going to just sort of wrap these around. And because of the uh, styrofoam, it actually uh, holds this all in. And I, I can be kind of messy because nobody's really gonna be seeing, uh, seeing all this and it gives a little bit of a texture. So it allows me to wrap this and you can really wrap it in whatever way you want. I just thought this looked kind of cool and then it really protects the ball and then it gives a little bit of a texture here. And you can hear that. Uh, if you need to, what you can do is turn it inside out, get this middle part um, right if you can feel where this hole is here, and then get this middle section with the drawstring cast off, wrap it around. Instead of trying to stuff it, you just make it go inside out. And now we've got the whole ball covered, okay? And now what we want to do is take our drawstring and pull it up. And then you can just readjust where these pieces are. And you have got this nice little ornament. And if you feel like you need a little bit more stuffing, you could make, uh, put another wrapping uh, on the inside of this ball. Um, you could spray paint the balls. Uh, the only thing about the reason why I covered them up is because if you have the styrofoam, uh, it can catch on the uh, the yarn. So de depending upon the type of yarn, it will catch it and, uh, and snag. But this is a nice little ball here. And then you can take this and knot it off and uh, make a couple of these and hang them on your door, hang them on a wreath, uh, put them on a Christmas tree, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, I wouldn't necessarily make it a cat toy unless you're making a felted ball. But so you've got this nice little fun decoration. Uh, I suggest that you can make them in bigger sizes and you can fill them all together in a little bowl for decoration as well. Thanks for tuning in on behalf of the crochet crowd and I'm Kristen at Good Knit Kisses. Happy looming!